It's Keelan. <laughs> I appreciate the uh, the willingness just to to wing it with me, man. <laughs> no worries. We're in it together, man. <laughs> All right, what did Facebook do? I literally have no idea where that just went. <laughs> wow. It's better to, to figure it out now, right? Than actually have be be like, all right, I've been uh, uh, marketing this, I'm gonna do this, and then all of a sudden you gotta go to live and things aren't working, you're like, oh, oh, oh this no. is, that is this not is good. good. No, so it's so Zoom says we're live, yep. and then the page that I was on disappeared. So I'm just navigating back to my to peel backs page. And so somebody may be just watching us having an, an awkward moment here. <laughs> well, it looks like it's actually working. I brought it up in a different browser. All right, well, it says we're live and it's buffering something, so. Oh, I can see us, cool, man. All right, well, here we are on the very first Peeled Back Livecast Conversations with my good friend, Tom, who's from New Zealand, but you'll notice that he says A, which gives it quite a way that he's a Canadian brother. So, thanks, Tom. You mind giving us a little like sh shout out about who you are and what you do and why do you believe today's connections is tomorrow's opportunity? Oh, I don't know if I want to do that. That sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I came from Canada. I grew up in Ontario, close to Ottawa. When I left school, I went to Calgary, Alberta. Cause I knew there was a good job market there and I figured why not? Uh, after working there for eight years, I decided I wanted to travel around. So I had met heaps of Aussies and other people who were just traveling. I decided, well, that's what I want to do for my life. Like that sounds pretty awesome. And uh, I spent a little bit more than a year traveling around, met my now wife when I was working in New Zealand and I was only supposed to be here for about two weeks. And then I stayed for a year, went back to Canada for a year and uh, well, I got dragged back. <laughs> the last time I was in Canada, I was in a lot of job programs and I was hurting and I was trying to find work and I couldn't find anything. And all of my time in the job programs, the one thing that came up all the time was networking, 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 networking. And I was trying to network and I was finding it absolutely miserable and I, I hated every minute of it. But then I got asked to do a presentation about looking for work while I was looking for work. And I did that and I thought like this was this was quite neat. Came over to New Zealand and when I first got here, I didn't have a work visa. I couldn't work or anything. We were applying for one in three months from, from that time. But in the meantime, all I did was spend all my time just working out and networking, doing some public speaking with Toastmasters every now and then. But it was just networking. And most of the networking was one-on-one -on -one conversations, a lot of just over a coffee. And I started thinking, well, huh, I wonder if I could do this or do that. And I had an idea planted in my head around three years ago, but never really did anything about it. And seven months ago, just before COVID broke out, well, it broke out worldwide as it is, I was like, huh. That idea I thought of before, let's start looking at that. And when I first started posting on LinkedIn and trying to connect again, I was spending all my time networking. Now, when it comes to today's connection is tomorrow's opportunity. This is a prime example right here. Gene and I connected a, a few months back and then he said, Hey, uh, I actually want to talk to people, you know, like, ah, uh, I don't want to just connect with you. I, I want to give you a call. And so we jumped on a call that day. And it was funny because you're like, do you want to jump on a call? Yeah, sure. Let's do it now. And so that's when we had started chatting. And uh, you're like, oh, this, this is pretty good. I'm like, oh, this is, this is really good. Like, I, I want to have more of these calls. <laughs> and then, like, here's an opportunity that's come up right here. 
you know, like to go on live feed here. And as an example for like today's connection, my wife and I were having a friend of the family come over just to meet our, our new son and to have a coffee with us. From there, she said to me, you need to go talk to this person. I went to talk to this other person. She's like, hey, do you want to do a presentation for our group? Yeah. From there, I met other people and then other opportunities came up. That was over one coffee. All of a sudden, all these other opportunities came up. And so I really do believe that today's connection is tomorrow's opportunity. You never know who you meet today, what will happen tomorrow, whether you can help them or they can help you. Yeah. And it's, you know, and I think that's so true, right? Like the, the one thing that I've really enjoyed about our friendship that we've developed, and it's all because of LinkedIn, because we were just out there liking and co- I think we commented on somebody's shared post and I noticed that you had a Calgary Flames jersey on or something and uh, just been like, are you Canadian, like living abroad? And then we just jumped on a call, you know, and same thing today. I was like, hey, Tom, wild idea about two hours ago. You want to just like try this live thing with me as a test? And your response was, yeah, let's do it. And it was, I, I air quoted it, winging it, which is, I think, a big part of actually putting yourself out there, right? When, you know, when, when typically, you know, I th- we've talked about this before, is that you go to the, like these chamber events or these really like downtown socials, everyone ends up kind of being like clicked off into their own little groups. It's really hard to like sometimes break through those hurdles those huddles, I should say, uh, which end up being hurdles, where the reality is, is like going off and having a coffee with somebody, even if you know them, that's networking. And I think people like, part of what I've heard from you in the past is like, people wildly overthink networking. And, and then it turns into like this transactional thing, instead of this relationship thing, is just because we connected, we're not necessarily doing business with each other, but that was yep. never the intention. It was about making a relationship. Be like, I don't know who he knows. And what if something about what I've said resonates? And what if something about what Tom says resonates with me? And I I can share that, which we have. We've been pretty awesome about like pumping each other up, which is, uh, is it's like the little bromance that's budding here from LinkedIn. <laughs> well, and what you mentioned was really important about the uh, like going to these networking events and things are not going very well. And over a coffee, that is networking. Quite often people will think, well, it's a networking event, so that's networking. And they don't think about the fact that just going out for coffee with somebody, even if it is one of your friends that is still networking. Yeah. Now, being a new dad, my networking has evolved into different areas. Like before becoming a dad, I would have never talked to parents about being a parent. I, I had no idea what I was getting into. And now all of a sudden, some people that are not parents, I, I almost don't want to talk because I'm like, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to talk to you about. <laughs> but now all of a sudden, I'll see somebody in. I was out for uh, drinks with, with some friends one night, and I saw one of the guys was married, so I asked him if he had kids. I would have never done that before, but now being a dad, of course I'm going to do that. It's, it, it's given me a different aspect to talk about. Yeah. But so many people think that networking is just about getting a job and that's not what it is and if the only thing you do is connect with someone hey do you got a job for me no the whole entire conversation just ends and you want to build a relationship up and you want it to be nice and open and you never know what will happen that's right yeah right i i think uh, maybe we haven't talked about it but i know you posted about is like that that underground job market which is really like I don't know about you, but I can think back of like no jobs I've gotten because of my resume, literally. Like there was a time in 2008 after some wild startup roller coasters, I was unemployed for a while. I'm like, I haven't ever actually like worked on my resume. It was wildly ineffective. And all you get, you just get hit by those uh, bombardments. And you know how I got my next lines of work? The same way I got all the other ones, knowing somebody. Well, my first job was delivering newspapers. Now, it's funny. This is the only time that I actually had a job come find me. And my hometown is 13,000 people. And all of a sudden, this car stops out of nowhere. And I was, I think, 12 years old. And two random guys are like, hey, you live around here? 
And it sounds like the worst thing ever. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I just, you know, just live over here. Yeah. I'm like, do you want to deliver papers? Okay. And that's the only <laughs> time a job has ever found me. But the first real, like, paying job, like, better paying job from there was my uncle's chip truck. There was no job posting. Then I got a job working at Harvey Swiss Chalet. My sister worked there and it was a friend of the family. No job posting, no interview. Yeah. But so many jobs that I've gotten, they there was no posting. Or even if there was, I already had my foot in the door. Yeah. I can think of one job posting that was done externally. And I had already talked to the manager three or four weeks before this job posting came up. And she said to me, oh, this job would be perfect for you. And uh, I'm like, oh, okay. We talked about it. I talked to internal people about it. And she said, do you want to do some cross training? All right. So I did cross training for two weeks before I even had an interview. Going into the interview, I knew exactly what the job was about. I knew the weaknesses and strengths of the job and my own. And I was able to get a job without a problem. And other people are applying for it, but I'm already half in the door. Yeah. So half the time you see those jobs online, they might already have somebody in line, but they have okay. to legally post it. Yeah. So you never know what, what jobs are really out there unless you go and talk to people. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because I've – listen to this book called never split the difference by Chris Voss. And like one of his stories he talks about is like, as he was on his road to becoming a hostage negotiator is trying to get into, the, into that door. The, the gatekeeper was just like, what have you done for me? Be like, you know how many people are on this list? You don't have any degrees or anything else. And he's just like, what do I need to do? He, she's just like, just kept pushing because she kept getting no. And finally the, uh, the boss at the time, she just went, you know what? You go work at a suicide hotline in the, for six months, then you come talk to me. He went, oh, okay. And he went off and did it. And then when he saw her, that boss or his future boss again, he's like, hey, so I've done this. And the, all of a sudden she's like, I've told that to a lot of people. Nobody's ever done it, you know, t t and start naming names. They're like, oh, yeah, I just had beers with that person. And he got the spot, like this coveted spot, because he went off it and did something that nobody else was doing. <laughs> I think the only job I've gotten from my resume was when I worked in the uh, Yukon as a night audit in Dawson city. So this is an area, no, like people don't want to move to doing a job. People don't want to, to do. Yeah. And that's the only reason why I was able to get that job. But for the most part, it's trying to get those jobs. It, it is quite difficult unless you actually have, have your foot in the door. Yeah. You know? and, he, and even if you got like a whole, bandwidth of specialty it, it's it's still a re, it's a tough gig because then you're 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 using recruiters or you're using something else to help get you know grease the wheel to get you through to that next step right and it, it all comes back down to who do you know yeah and, uh, so i just posted a video on my facebook and then my sister saw it and she's like oh maybe i can get you to uh, talk with my team about being uncomfortable and uh, dealing with fears and stuff. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. And uh, there's been people that have, I've connected with over the past few months and we were not connected in any way whatsoever previously. And then all of a sudden it's, oh, you like networking or you like this? Hey, let's, let's, let's have a little chat. And there was one podcast that I was on recently and the girl's like, wow, I, I didn't know what to expect with, from your story. And now you've told me. I need to connect you with these other people. You really never know who you'll meet and, and what will come up. And yeah. that's why it's important you ask those kind of open questions, not just the, hey, do you got a job? <laughs> well, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. There's, so I've been li uh, uh, you know, work, listening through this uh, webinar right now, I, a summit, I guess, for coaches called Get, Get Ahead Challenge. And there was two things that have come up over the last couple of days that really tie to that is that the one from Lisa Nicole today talked about always being relatable, finding ways to like actually use that as a skill is something that you can grow so that you can be relatable to whoever you're, you're talking with. 
And that ties right into the overarching thing, which is like, how do you build rapport and trust with somebody? If you're coming in with just the whole, hey, nice to meet you, Mr. Transaction, be like, mm, gates are closed, nothing's going to happen. But you come in and be like, hey, tell me about your story. I'd love to know. Like, there's no, you know, and actually be curious about it is I think the biggest thing is like, if you're bringing curio true curiosity and then looking to understand that person, they're gonna be like, wow, he's a good listener and a really interesting person. And if you understand them enough, they're gonna want to be curious about you, right? It, it's, it's having that key to open that door to more conversations. And it's, it is really on you. It's about the, I believe it's about the intention you bring to each situation that's going to impact it, right? It kind of leaves like a, a ripple effect behind. One, well, if, uh, if the more you're trying to build a relationship up with people, the better it is. Like if you just come up with, uh, I hate it when people just ask them, oh, how are you? But they're doing it just because they feel they have to. But like when someone actually asks me how I am and they, they care about it, yeah. you can see the whole difference in there too. Right. And, and it's, Oh, I actually do want to talk to you then, you know? Yeah. Um, well, what's funny is I'm working with a speaker coach now and I'm about to ask, how's that going? So I've had one session with him so far, but even before the session happened, I decided to go take a look back through my videos. And then I started picking out these different aspects of, okay, I need to change this. I can do this a little bit differently. Okay, some of this is really good. And then we actually had our session. And as we're going through the session, there's certain questions he asked me like, oh, now I see some of my problem. And he's just asking very basic general intro questions. And I'm thinking, oh, I haven't even started there. I was going 100 miles an hour and I didn't even start at the beginning. I was trying to start at the end. Yeah. And so now I'm revamping my whole entire presentation and it was, it was a really good session, but I, I left and I thought, man, there's so many things that I really need to do differently now. And, uh, at the end of that session too, I said to him, I knew there's a reason why I picked you to work with. And this is someone that I actually, I started talking to him a few years ago and we've chatted back and forth a couple of times. And when I was about to start with this new business that I'm working on, I had a chat with him and we had a, a little bit of conversation. And now it's funny that I've got this opportunity to work with him, which is just phenomenal for me to be able to get that kind of opportunity. And I've just realized so many different aspects that what I'm trying to do and uh, where I'm trying to go. And he's made me think deeper about some of it. And then some of it, it's been just those very basic questions about, well, what are you trying to do with this? And where do you want to go? And I realized what I was doing. And what was funny is I want to do some networking events. And then I told him about the networking events that I've done. And then he would say, uh, so you did this and you did that. Oh, so everything I'm talking about not doing I'm actually doing those aspects. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> doesn't, that, doesn't that mirror reflection suck sometimes? Like coaches are the worst. You're like, oh, <laughs> you're, you're, show, you're looking at that mirror and you're like, oh, you don't even need to say it. I already can see it. I get it. The, the perfect thing though is I'm working with him now and then he's running a networking uh a LinkedIn networking at the end of the month. And I'm going to go down there for a session, but for this networking event. So I'm going to see how he does it. And they're doing it quite differently. And so I'm going to be able to get a chance just to see how somebody else is running a very different networking event and yeah. be able to apply that for myself. That's awesome. Uh, so, and what, like, you know, sh you know, part of these live conversations with is I want people to be able to at least have a gem. So you, you've skirted around some of the things that you saw that you're like, oh my God, I, I jumped to a hundred before I even got through chapter one. So like, what was like one of those like aha moments that you had, Tom? 
one of the questions he asked me was just, uh, well, what outcomes are you trying to get? And I told him some of the outcomes, but then I also realized how narrow it was or more or less. I was like, well, I want to help job seekers out, but like, why? And what, what specifically are you doing for it? And I talk a lot about fear because of overcoming a fear of drowning. Yeah. And he said, okay, well, that, that's great that you talk to people about fear during these sessions. But what, what, what are you talking to them about fear? And then I realized I actually didn't even go back to the very beginning. So the, one of the examples he gave me was, let's say we were rock climbing. And then all of a sudden you got really scared, right? You don't want a 10-minute instructions of, you can do this. You're great. You're awesome. It's put your left hand on that rock two feet in front of you. Put your right hand on the purple rock right beside you. And that's what you need when you're coming over fear. And I yeah. didn't even think about that aspect. And I was jumping too far ahead. Right. And one of the things he said to me was, you're comfortable with this. That's fine. But what you're talking about is what's comfortable for you. And you're not talking about what might be comfortable for somebody else. Right. Another thing he said to me was your name. How important that is, right? And he told me of uh, this one guy that he met, and the guy's name is Korshik. So when the guy first introduced himself as Korshik, he's like, I'm Korshik. And he said it very quietly. And then he had caught him to repeat, he's like, well, what did you say? And then Korshik said it even, Korshik, even quieter and quieter. And what happened was a lot of uh, people from the Canada, New Zealand, Australia, couldn't understand how to pronounce his name. Right. And because he couldn't understand how to pronounce his name, he would say it quieter and he got more and more insecure. And the more he would introduce himself and the more people would repeat, he would think to himself, see, people can't, they, they don't know how to pronounce it. And right. they'd get quieter and quieter and quieter with it. And then uh, Michael had said to the guy, well, what you need to do then is break it down. Okay. Let's take your name, the first part core like an apple core, the last part shik like a razor, Korshik. And then the guy started pronouncing his name, like being like, yeah, I'm Korshik. And people like, okay, got it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden his confidence went up. You know, and uh, these are different things that I didn't think about. You know, like I'm telling them to go do networking events. You can do this and do that. These are different ways to network. But if you can't even, you know, say who you are to somebody with confidence, you're not going to want to do anything else. Yeah. So you, you're kind of looking at it going, I've already been through it. I'm, here's the fear. I'm living over here. This is great. You guys should all join me and forgetting and then not realizing be like, oh, you're on the other side of fear going, mm -mm, no, nope, not happening. Like, I don't even want to take that step forward. So you, you've got that beacon. You're the beacon of hope. And now it's because you were a doer. Now it's like your opportunity to come in and be a, um, a teacher. Right. And that like, is like, yeah. that, that's that shift. You're like, how far back do we have to go? Yeah. Our, 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 oh, be like you, we actually get to the point where you have to pronounce your name and love pronouncing it and say it loudly or being able to open the door or being able just to like, well, in not a COVID world, but be like, Go up and shake a hand and look somebody in the eye and even know what hand to be shaking because there's all these little like subtleties around it, right? Like one of the tricks yeah. back in the day of back in the day of handshaking, maybe someone's <laughs> gonna look at this and be like, what's a handshake 10 years from now? But you, you'd wear your name tag, and then so you go in and shake with the opposite hand. That way your name is still exposed. Whereas a lot of people would like shake their hand and cover their name tag up. So it makes it hard for the two people to be like, oh hi. Gene, nice to meet you. It's just those like wee little subtle things that can like make a big difference. And I think it always comes back down to like, I think people are hoping for a silver bullet and it's a whole bunch of like little silver sli slivers that is actually going to kill that fear. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> it was, for me, it was, it was a lot of good learning. And 
now that I've got another presentation that I'm going to be doing in over the next little bit, I can apply some of what I've learned to that and see where we can go from there. Yeah. Um, the last few weeks has been quite good. Like I've got another couple of podcasts that I'm going to be going on to. And I've talked to a few different speakers and I've met some really phenomenal people over the last little bit. And what's funny is when I talk to people about networking too, one of the things I tell them is engage with posts on LinkedIn. Like it, it's nice that you see the post and, and you like it, but like they might not even react to it. Yeah. And if you just go and see, okay, that that's phenomenal. Like uh, that's a great post, but don't add anything to it. You're not helping yourself. No. Go on there to somebody's post and engage with it. Uh, like if your background's in accounting and you see a post about accounting, add some value to it. You know, and if you have overcome a fear and you see a post about fear, add some value to it. Add your own story to go along with that. And a lot of people won't. They'll go onto LinkedIn, put their profile up, and then that's it. They leave it at that. Yeah. And sometimes they think, well, the jobs will come to me or I don't know what to do with it. What do you mean if you don't if you don't build it, they won't just magically come? This isn't a Kevin Costner movie. This is crazy. No. Like you would have to be pretty special. And I, I don't know <laughs> if for the most part it's, and this is what happened with me before where I started posting and I was getting no engagement and eventually I stopped. Yeah. I thought, well, what's the point of this? Right. I, I'm not, I'm not enjoying this. And I tried a couple times, nothing was working. And seven months ago when I started posting again, all of a sudden I started getting a few posts that were trending and I started getting more engagement and I was like, Oh, this is fantastic. But I also started engaging with people's posts more often too. And sometimes I will go on to specific profiles to see, Oh, what's Gene up to? I haven't seen any of his posts in a while because they're drowned out by other posts. And I'll go and see what that specific person is doing, what they've been posting on recently. And sometimes it's, they're not even posting. Like you're just engaging with everybody else's posts. Yeah. You know, well, personally, I love it when I wake up in the morning uh, because being on the West Coast in Canada, Tom's already been up and probably getting ready for bed. So he's seen my stuff and I get this nice little like message be like, oh, man, thanks. And then I want to go reciprocate. Right. And, and get engagement and, and give that engagement back. Right. And I think that's an interesting piece that you talk about there is not just putting a like on it because that's meaningless. To, well, for me at least, and I think for you yeah, as well, cool. like where where I figured out is like where I'm actually like do something to cause a, a conversation or at least show some appreciation. Like you, you we you know we both talked about these uh let's let's network and people are just posting like it's more or less uh back in the day where you'd be on chat sites is what was it ASL, which if you're not old enough, you don't know what that actually means, right? So it was yeah. a lot of these things kind of remind me of that. But if you get into some of the ones that we've been on where it's just like, man, this was really good. And here's what I took out of it versus awesome. Oh, incredible. A hundred percent. Be like, I've actually taken my time to show the poster that their stuff was meaningful and that it, I enjoyed what, what, you know, watching it or reading it. And as a poster, like, I love it when people actually comment on it and go, oh, that was cool. Or have you thought of this? Or here's how this actually applies to my thing. And the next greatest piece from that is like, it, you know, a lot of people, I think, think they have to come up with this incredible content, be like, yeah, I mean, there's super smart people out there that are already posting great co content. You can reshare that and put your own lens on top of it to extend it. Because what happens is there's so many, there, there's billions of people on this planet and probably billions or hundreds of millions on LinkedIn. And those people that you like that you think are really incredible, maybe somebody in your network has never even heard of them. So by you resharing it and putting your own lens on it, you've now helped spread that message around, right? And it's just getting it out there more. And it's that's really, that's, that's the key. Well, when it comes to sharing, one of the really important keys with LinkedIn is actually adding your value, which you just uh, mentioned. Because some people go and share a post and that's nice that you shared it. 
but you're not really saying anything. Like you're not ad- adding anything to it. If you go and uh, someone posted about fear, you share it and say like, I, I understand what this is like. I've gone through this as a fear or I, I'm trying to deal with this as a fear. And yeah. some were like, oh, yeah, okay. Now I can see why you shared that. Yeah. And if you just share it, it's, okay, this is a good post, but I don't know, like, why are you sharing this? Yeah. Um, like, and yeah, just not, not enough people are, are really doing that. And it's really good to be able to go and yeah. add, this is why I'm kind of sharing it. But well, it's like when, it's quantity over quality, right? When you think about LinkedIn, think about it as a nonstop networking. And let's say you go in, like, as we're having a conversation, if you say, yes, you're just agreeing, right? That's no different than if someone likes your post, they're agreeing to the post or saying, oh, good. Now, as we're having this conversation, if, uh, and as I talk and you add value and like you add your own, well, this is what I think. That's no different than if you're posting on LinkedIn and it's, um, I've overcome this fear and someone else says, oh, this is what I've done for my fear or how I've overcome it. You're adding value to it. It's yeah. like adding value to a conversation. Then if you go and share it, it's like saying, hey, Gene, this is my network. Or, hey, Gene, this is so-and-so. Yeah. You know? And, and yeah. this is why I want to introduce Gene to these people because he's overcome yeah. this. You're, you're, you're giving them that warm introduction. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah, you know, uh, if for, for me, I think that's that stuff's so critical. And it is like, again, you know, what we're delivering is some more like put your hand on the purple rock, put your hand on the green rock right now. It, it doesn't have to be hard, right? And if you just want to get warmed up into it, then find a few people that you actually resonate with their message and just engage in their comments. You know, there's a lot of them that are, you know, uh, I, I like Kerwin Ray and Greg Gillis. I may have just destroyed his last name, um, but like those guys are actually really good. I, may, I I know that most of them have a team and everything else, but they're they're very their team and them are very good at actually following up on you know their comments and going, hey, thanks for putting that. You know, I, I love your opinion on that or that spin. And even when I share some of their stuff, they they comment back on to my threads, which is like I'm like, oh man, that's I look up to these guys and they, they took their time out to, to go do that. But it's, it's just important. It, it just kind of rebuilds upon it. Right. And it's incredible actually how quickly some of the, your, your network starts to build like over the last like four months of myself doing it, I've, I've added like hundreds of people. And plus I get some really good conversations that get to be repeated out of it. So you're putting that net out there you're going to get some kind of surface level connections, get some decent like LinkedIn friends, and then you get to build actual friendships with people that are like, no, I'll keep having a call with you. Well, some people, what they do on LinkedIn is they'll only add people that they know. Fine. If if that's what you would like to do, then that's okay. But you're not going to expand any further than that. And some people will think, well, I only want to, if I work in accounting, I only want to network with people that are in accounting. Okay. Fine, yeah. but you might connect with someone in marketing and they might have a whole network of accounts. And if you decide, well, I'm only going to connect with accounts, you might miss out on other opportunities because you didn't connect with this person. Yeah. Um, I was traveling in Guatemala a few years ago and I met this guy from Japan. And at the end of the trip, he's like, oh, I'll see you in Japan. I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. And a year later, I was like, actually, I'm going to go to Japan. And I went to visit him. Yeah. Two years after that, my wife had an opportunity to go work in Japan for a few months. And so I sent him a message and said, hey, my wife's coming over. Do you mind showing her around? Yeah. You never know when you meet somebody today what will happen tomorrow. Oh, exactly. Someone's here doesn't mean they won't be where you are, you know? Yeah. Oh, exactly. Right. Like it, it's, it's your catchphrase all, all wrapped up and being, you've just proven it. You, you had no idea where today's connections was going to bring tomorrow's opportunities. And it's, and for, for me, I think that's just so, so true. And I've told you many times, I'm like, man, that's so, so cat. I end up using it, right. Where you're going to have to slap a TM on, on, on that. Or every time I use it, I'm going to have to be like, you know, <laughs> Tom in real life too now, because that's uh 
it to me the way that you've you've got simplified it so much you've you've gotten it to the point that it is hand on purple rock hand on yellow rock that is just how easy you've made it you've made it a, a great teaching moment well, I, i've tried a few different things over the years a bunch of them have failed but this one uh this one i think i'm going to keep for a little while <laughs> <laughs> Well, man, I, I thought this was only going to go for 20 minutes or so, and I should have known better knowing how, how we, we get into these. So uh, I know that you're at home, you're at the in-laws, and that you're uh, do, doing some uh, butchering, I believe you were saying. You're, you're working on, you're getting some meat for the, is it going into your winter or summer? Summer. Yeah, so. Well, my friend, I, I really appreciate this and being a, a guinea pig and me going, hey, 10 minutes <laughs> let's jump on this and you were willing to do that so i super super appreciate it and i thank you very much and uh please uh, say thank you to your wife for allowing me to steal you for half an hour no worries my friend anytime all right well you have a good rest of your weekend my friend and we'll talk soon sounds good all, all right. right talk to you later man yeah bye bye